Welcome back to my channel. Glad you could join me today. Now for those who are new and don't know me, my name's Charles. I've been a photographer for quite a while. About eight, nine months ago, I bought a little DJ Mini 2. Today, I want to show you the benefits of having a Mini 2 to photograph panoramas. But there's one problem with photographing panoramas because there's a great app that comes with it called the Fly More app. You can do panoramas in there, but I found the problem with them is they're very low resolution. They're just great for putting up on Facebook. If you're a keen photographer or a keen drone operator and you want to take some nice photos with your drone, the JPEG files are only 1.2 megs. And when they stitch up, you're going to end up with a file around 4 megabytes. Great for Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but if you think about printing it, forget it because the file is so small. I find that I shoot in RAW on my DJI Mini 2. I shoot in RAW, but when you're photographing just a single row, like take a look at this image here. This was photographed three days ago at Lake Eden, which is about 10 minutes drive from me. We've got a very limited view of the area. I've tried to split it so it's 50-50 my foreground and 50-50 the sky because the sky looked nice, but you can't see too much of your foreground. This is the problem when we're just shooting panoramas, just one beside the other. This has already been edited. It's not just straight out from the drone. I've used the Adobe Lightroom program to edit and then stitch my panorama. What if we could shoot a multi-row panorama? Two rows of images. So we have the same width, but let's say double height. Well, not so much double the height because we're going to have an overlap, but let's say two thirds more of the height like this here. Look at that. This is the same width, but now compared to the other one here, I'm just cutting in just below the hotel here. And now look, I've got the whole lake and I've got the road down here. You put that up on your social media page or even on your photography page and people are going to be astounded. They're like, you took that from a drone? Your little Mini 2 drone? Wow, that is just so incredible. That is the potential using the Mini 2 or any other drone that you can shoot in RAW. I have been researching in, for the last couple of days programs that I can use on my computer to edit my photos, to stitch my photos, and nothing that is cheap has been able to help me out. Because when you do panoramas, and this is the big problem when you're gonna shoot and edit panoramas, is that they've got to be synchronized. All the settings you apply on one photo have to be synchronized across the whole lot. So there's 12 photos that have been stitched in this image. Six for the top, six for the bottom. All the editing that I've done on one has to be synchronized across all of them. That way, when you stitch them all together, they come out nice because if you're trying to edit one photo at a time, and this is what I found with some of the cheaper photo editing programs, I've got to apply the settings individually. That is so time consuming. Yes, you're saving money, but it is so time consuming. So you need a piece of paper and go like, okay, I've increased the exposure, I've increased the saturation, I've increased the contrast, all the way down. And you've got to write all these settings. I've got 12 images here. I tried this. This took me over half an hour. My time is money. Your time is money, even if it's a hobby. Time is money. It's time that you could have spent doing something else. I'm not saving money because even though these programs are cheap, 20, 25 dollars US, sometimes 30 US dollars, the time that you're going to spend when you're going to need to edit and then stitch your panoramas because you're going to need at least two programs is not worth the hassle. So I said, no, I'm going to talk about how good Adobe Lightroom Classic is to edit your RAW file and also to stitch so you've only got one program. Now I can already imagine people are going to write in the comments, but you're going to pay. You're going to pay a subscription. Yes, you are. Works out to three cups of coffee a month. I'm willing to pay a program like this for three cups of coffee a month. What's $14 a month when you've got a program that gets updated all the time? So let's take a look at how I did this first. Now, before I show you how I edited and stitched these 12 images into a multi-row panorama, I want to show you how I use the DJ Fly app to take these photos, because this is quite important, because if you want to replicate this, you're going to need to know about this. Now, you can see on the screen here, I have the DJI Fly app. Now, I've got a screen recording program on my phone. So this is a screen recording of what I saw and what the drone was doing. 
The reason I use the DJI Fly app, I can see the degree. So I can see how much tilt that I'm giving the camera gimbal. This is very important when you're doing multi-row panoramas because you're going to need to reset your pitch for each photo. So now let's see how I did it. There you go, powered up the Fly app. I've chosen it. Connecting. Take there we off. go. Take off. I'm, I'm just beside the lake. Start recording. This is all fly by, by stick. Now I do cut a little bit here, the stuff that's not important. So I'm just rising up to make sure I clear all power lines, anything like that. I'm going backwards. Now there's no rush. It took me about two, three minutes to get to the position that I want to be and also the distance and the height. First, I was around 75 meters and I saw that I was too high. So I dropped my height down to 50 meters. The distance here is 180, but you'll see I actually come a little bit closer to around 160. And I tried to situate myself with the drone about halfway through this causeway here. So I could then pan left, pan right, in multi rows to get a very nice view of the whole lake area. Now I'm just rotating the drone back. I'm coming in. I'm going to stop at around 160 meters. And now I adjust my shutter speed. I can't adjust the aperture. The aperture on a DJI Mini 2 is fixed at f2.8. All I can do is adjust the shutter speed and my ISO. My ISO, because it's daytime, it's at 100. So all I'm doing now is adjusting my shutter speed. And I'm going to adjust my shutter speed to try to balance out from the darker foreground here below. And then when I tilt up towards the clouds to try to balance out the two. Because when you're photographing like this, you don't want to blow out your highlights just like a normal photo. Now you can see here, I'm adjusting my shutter speed. I'm going like, yep, okay, 120th of a second. And I'm looking for my exposure down here. See it's showing minus one. I'm going like, yep, I'm pretty happy with that. There you go, take the first photo. Now you can see I'm raising up to zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move across a little bit. Take another photo. Now I'm at zero degrees here. Now I come down. To minus 20 degrees because that was what the first one was done you can see I'm just slowly coming down I don't want to overshoot 20 degrees take a photo I just pan to the right you can see that take another photo I just bring the camera gimbal back up to zero degrees take a photo same again move to the right take a photo tilt the gimbal back down to minus 20 degrees again Take a photo. And this you have to be very careful. It has to be the same. No good being minus 18 or minus 22. It has to be minus 20 at all times. And you can see all I'm doing is just a zigzag. Now you can see I'm on low battery at the moment. It's giving me a warning, but it's telling me I've still got 20%. I've still got quite a bit of time. So I'm just ignoring the warning. I'm just taking my photos. That's it. And this is about the last or second last pan. That's it. Take one. Raise the gimbal up. And I move one last time. Now down minus 20 degrees. That's it. So you can see how I took it. And this is quite important. The first couple of times you do this, don't rush yourself. Make sure that whatever camera gimbal degrees you set, every photo has to be the same. On the DJI Fly App, you can increase the gimbal height over zero degrees. So you can make it like plus 10 to I think plus 20. So I've disabled that so that the most I can tilt is zero degrees. That way I know that when I quickly rotate the gimbal up, it's going to stop at zero. When you're shooting, if you're shooting at minus 15, whatever it is, you've got to make sure that all the photos are the same. I chose minus 20 because I want to make sure I had a good one third overlap between top and bottom. When I teach panoramic photography, it's the same with digital SLRs or with other types of cameras. You've got to give yourself one third overlap. So on these photos, because this 
camera has such a bit of distortion on I made sure that I had more than a third it was about half overlap but between top and bottom I made sure that I had around a third overlap so I got quite a bit of height and you saw that that as I tilted there was quite a bit of overlap in the middle I want to make sure that when I'm stitching the images everything is going to stitch up beautifully now let's dive into Lightroom and I'll show you how I edited these photos so here are our 12 photos in DGN format they're raw files but they come up as DGNs this was the first one second then I moved across so you can see like they're two 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 twos what I do is I'll just select the 12 images in a whole this is the easiest way I come up to the develop module we click on basic and here this is where we do all of our editing you can see like we have the color profile we can salute we choose Adobe landscape what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the second image here because this is going to be our sky this is the one that I want to make sure I don't blow out the highlights on I'm going to reduce the highlights I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit now the blacks if it's on a Windows PC I hold the alt key down hold black and I don't want to see anything see I can see black there I don't want to see that now I'm going to increase the texture and the clarity this is just going to sharpen up the image a little bit more and just a little bit of dehaze we have vibrance and saturation now for those who don't know anything about Adobe Lightroom check out my YouTube channel I have some great videos on how to edit photos in Adobe Lightroom today I'm just going to quickly skip through just show you quickly how I edited these photos so I'll put a link up here to one of my Lightroom videos and you can watch if you've never used Adobe Lightroom and this is all I want to do here and now the last thing I want to do here is in the detail the detail for here is I want to control the sharpness now I want to add a bit of sharpening but not across the whole image I hold the alt key down and in the masking here can you see it's all white if I slide the slider towards the right can you see now we're getting a lot of black this is good because all the black area I'm not increasing sharpening on so it's only in the white areas this is good now I can increase the detail and increase the radius increase the amount so it's just the edges of your image all the outlines that's what's being sharpened the sky isn't being sharpened at all so it's going to stay a very clear photo I really like this now let's just check out the bottom photo to see what it looks like great now I'll just come back up to the library mode here and you can see my 12 images are selected I right click on the mouse and click photo merge panorama and this is going to auto stitch it you see here on the right we have spherical cylindrical and perspective it's chosen cylindrical and it looks really good you can see like there's a bit of curves that's been cut out when I teach panoramic photography I tell people you've got to count at least one extra frame on each side because you're going to get that curve if I thought that I wanted the traffic light that intersection that's on the left of the image here fully seen I would have shot at least one or even two extra frames to the left but I did I just wanted Lake Eden and the park area here I just shot a little bit more the car park looked quite nice of this college here so it's a little bit leaning to the right but that's all right I can fix all that in Lightroom later I can increase the boundary wrap a little bit that's it I'm happy with this now all I do is just click merge it's going to join all these images together and drop it back into Lightroom you can see on the top left here creating panorama there we go there's our image now we go back to the develop module and look at that really nice we can see we've got a bit of cropping to do if I come up to the cropping tool up here look can you see that it does lean from left to right we can easily fix that we come down to the bottom here we've got our little two arrows and we just tilt it around get it straight a bit that's what we want but now look now this is a problem because we're shooting such a wide image that the earth is round so we've got curvature in our panorama it's very easy to get rid of what we do down here is we go into lens correction down the bottom here here we have distortion watch what happens when I slide this slider around can you see if I slide it to the right can you see how it's pushing back now we've got a straight horizon what we've done instead of having a curve because it looks like the middle of our image is closer to us so we've used the distortion slider here to push the middle back to end up with a straight horizon which is very artificial because the higher up you go the more curvature of the earth you see so this is why I brought my altitude 
back down to 50 because the higher up you go the more of this curvature that you're going to see if you shoot wide panoramas. Now I'm very happy I've got a straight horizon now all I have to do is just crop just come into the side come into the side just get the maximum field of view that I want that's it. Now I don't want all this area on the side here I said like we'll just stop at the car park we'll come up a little bit up here that's it beautiful we click done look at that so nice because we're so high up we have compression in our image the hotel here look at all the houses they look like they've been compressed they've been squashed because we're high up and the higher you go also the more compression you're going to see now we have to decompress it we have to bring it back to reality and this is where we use the transform panel here we have aspect ratio now watch what happens when i slide it to the right here can you see now look we're seeing a bit of white on the side here why because we're compressing the image to make it look more realistic there that looks much better i've just got to go back in and recrop the image and we'll push in through this side here because i stopped at the apex of this building now i can bring it down a little bit that's it looks beautiful we're very nicely cropped we click done that's it my panorama is finished all i have to do now is export in Lightroom we don't save an image because these are raw files they can't be saved if it was a JPEG if you're working in Photoshop or another program if you save your images you're overwriting your original image in Adobe Lightroom it doesn't allow you to do this you have to export it so you export it on another file name this is a panorama so the shortcut key is Control shift e for export and this is where I want to send it to drone click export it's saving my image so that's it our panorama has been saved ready to publish onto any social media platform that you want or like I just saved it in JPEG here or you can save it in TIFF and you can take it to a print shop and print it out into a very nice panorama image and you're going to have a beautiful vista of wherever you took this image from I hope this helped you and I hope to see that even using the DJI Mini 2 you can get fabulous photos not just single photos but you can get panoramas and not just panoramas two row panoramas multi row look at the amount of view that you're getting so much nicer than just a single photo because a single photo would just cover the lake area it wouldn't show me all the houses all the apartments around this road down here this is the beauty of photographing panoramic images and this is why I love photographing panoramic images stay tuned because you're going to see many more multi-row panoramic images that I will take using my DJI Mini 2 if this video has been of help to you give it a big thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do it really helps me out helps me get more content out to people stay safe enjoy using your mini 2 or any other drone and i'll see you next time